All right, today we're thrilled to have with us Matt Cousineau, a board game enthusiast from Sudbury, Ontario, who's turned his passion into a reality with the game Kyperium. The game has sold over 400 copies on Kickstarter. 90 minutes, he was fully funded. So I can't wait to find out more about this game. Thank you so much for joining us, Matt. Appreciate having you. Hey guys, thanks, uh, thanks so much for having me. Uh, it's exciting thanks, to be on. Matt. <laughs> All right, so Matt, we always start out with our first question. The first question is, tell us something that we can't find on Google about you. Can't find on Google. Okay. What, the, the bad stuff or the, the, the fun stuff? Uh, yeah. Let's do <laughs> Shoot, do both if you want. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. I'm, I guess uh, outside of board gaming, my next kind of big passion is probably, I'm going to say the, the typical stereotypical canadian thing but i'm a huge uh sports fan and uh oh, yeah. bigger, mm -hmm. ho hockey being my main my main sport and uh oh, rock nice. test it's a it's a huge deal up here and uh yeah, yeah i just i follow the toronto maple leafs and you know i i bleed blue and white and i'm just a huge huge fan of the game um and yeah i guess nice. that's that's probably it so toronto so you're, you're one of those you're one of those few classy leafs Fanatic. fans i gotta give you that I yeah. give you that. Yeah. Rob B is a Bruins fan, and we hear it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, we do. it's tough to be a Leafs fan, um, and the Bruins have had the best of us over the last decade. So, yeah, hopefully one of these days I'll get to see the Leafs get the better of the Bruins. Yeah. Mm. All right. So your game, <laughs> Kyperium, has been a hit on Kickstarter, raising $300,000. And and oh, not, as we not, not that much. Thirty oh, grand. Did I say three hundred? I said three hundred. <laughs> Thirty thousand. <000. laughs> <Zero is>, Stretch. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's three hundred sounded better. So. <laughs> does, yeah. <laughs> okay, so thirty thousand and it pre-sold four hundred copies. So that's incredible. That's so right. I really want to quickly before we kind of get into the game, I want to share this trailer that we have of the game so that we can get, kind of get a sense of what the game is like. Our son is dying. Throughout human history, we've looked to the stars and all. Infinite possibilities. Now desperate and cold, we look to the stars beyond our world for salvation. We look to the stars for a miracle. Today we launch our greatest hope to the first... Sold out so quick. Smile on my face every time I see that trailer. I, I bet. <laughs> yeah, so can it. you can you tell us more about the game and you know what players can expect? You know and you know with it set to hit stores this summer. You know what are your hopes for the game? Yeah. Right. Um. I mean, this is our first ever uh, game design. So my my buddy and I, Steve Castle, um, actually met at a competitive card game tournament. Um, mm. we met at the final table of a Star Wars Destiny. Uh, collectible card game tournament. Um, nice. uh, side note, nice. I beat him. Uh, but <laughs> we ended up becoming uh, good friends. <laughs> we ended up becoming good friends, and uh, he was working on on his first game, and it kind of piqued my interest of like, okay, maybe maybe designing games is something I would be interested in. Um, if you're watching on the video, you could see behind me. There's, uh, you know, probably a couple hundred board games on shelves, see, and yeah. it's just a huge huge passion of mine. Um, I just love board gaming and, and, you know, exercising 
your brain that way and solving puzzles and and competing and all that stuff it's just a lot of fun and uh yeah so um i just decided to take my hand at at designing games and so steve and i have been working on this game uh, or had been working on the game i guess for about two years before it hit kickstarter Mm -hmm. um and as i was saying it's our first ever design so the goal was just to make a game it wasn't wasn't anything else other than like getting a game made and you know having a a moder a modest uh goal on Kickstarter just so that we could get it out to you know a couple hundred people whoever might be interested in it and then who knows you know where it goes from there and uh yeah so you know we decided we'll make a little card game and we started working at it and uh at the beginning of the pandemic nice. uh, I guess we had a little bit of extra time on our hands uh, not being able to to do too much else yeah. Yeah. and um it like we just got obsessed with it. I guess it's one of those things. Um, I'm sure we all have those passions where just something grabs you and you just get obsessed yeah. with it and you can't even sleep at night because you're thinking of like the ifs, ends and buts, right. uh, you know, when you're trying to fall asleep and, you know, so yeah, it's, it's, it's something that just um, kind of took a life of its own um, and grabbed us. And, you know, you fast forward, like, I want to say six weeks later, we had like, we were probably about 80% of the way to designing the game as you know where it is now so it, wow. it it got to a point you know where it was a complete game really really fast mm. um to, even to our surprise we're like you know this is a fully playable fun game and mm. of course we had a lot of work to do in terms of like tweaking and balancing and making sure that everything worked properly but we were sure. we, we got there really fast and and then you know as we started to work a little bit on the graphic design and the art and that kind of stuff as it started to come together it felt like it deserved a little bit more than just like oh let's throw it on kickstarter and see what happens mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, right. so we ended up partnering with um dragon egg games um and uh so max over at dragon egg games helped us kind of publish the game because we had no idea what we were doing and and he had a little bit of experience with kickstarters so yeah, we worked with him and um, spent a lot more money than we expected, um, <laughs> but also made made more money than we expected. I mean, you gotta you gotta spend a little bit of money Sweet. to make you do make money. No so yeah, the, it uh, like I said, it took a life of its own, and um, we we're just really excited to see it run so quickly and find a fan base. And so now we've ordered uh, a thousand games to start. Um, the nice. manufacturing process is is happening right now um and yeah we're expecting it to to land uh here in north america and, and all over the world actually in the next uh two months or so nice so before the summer's wow. out oh. so your your trailer your trailer is very video game like i mean was that intentional yeah. Do, are you a video gamer i mean was that intentional though because i know robbie and i no, play video not games necessarily it looks like movie. um yeah a, a good like props to uh or you know huge shout out to my my friend jason mckinnon mm -hmm. who's um uh, one of my best friends from college um and he's a, a video editor a professional video editor and oh, at some point just in chatting with him and stuff he said like send me all your assets i'm gonna make you something and then right. like he sent me back wow. like you know most of what you see in that video and i'm like oh my god this is wow. amazing it is pretty um, amazing yeah so, it yeah it was a huge huge help and and like in the board gaming in the hobby board gaming world a lot of games go through kickstarter it's kind of a standard place for mm -hmm. people to go and get oh. games made and buy games right um and it's okay. kind of just become the standard where if you're putting a game on kickstarter you've got to have a, a kick-ass video mm -hmm. and um and so it was like you know we've got really lucky to be able to get something so professional and nice. something that looks yeah. so great yeah so let me ask you real yeah. quick. So do you, um, you know, you're, you're not just a, a board game enthusiast, you know, but you're also an ambulance dispatcher, <laughs> proud father of That's two, right, yeah. proud father of two boys, yeah. you know, quite, quite mm -hmm. unique mix. So can you share how these different roles affect your life and how they might've influenced the creation of Kyperium? Also, if you could kind of go into the gameplay, how the game is played. Sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Life is busy for sure. Um, you know, I work uh, shift work nights and days, 12 hour shifts and uh, dispatching ambulances. It can be an intense job at times. But the flip side of that is that, you know, on night shifts, <laughs> when it's not too busy in the wee hours of the morning, uh, we do get a little bit of downtime. And so, um, 
a, a lot of this game was designed at work um mm-hmm. you know just on nice. just sitting on my laptop um or with the pen and paper and and working away and plugging away at the design um but yeah yeah life Sweet. life is definitely busy and and i'm lucky to have a, a an amazingly supporting wife that uh has been able to take on a, a little bit yeah, more here and there so that I can oh, yeah. Kind of, yeah so that i can pursue my my dreams and passions so i'm, I'm very very lucky for that um Aww. so how yeah, do you play so the game the, yeah yeah in terms of the yeah. game itself um basically you know without going into too much detail it's a two-player game it's head-to-head okay. 1v1 so okay. there is a very much a like a super competitive like mono a mono sit down and 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 you know the the person who's gonna outwit the other will will take away the victory um if any of you guys have ever played like uh, a trading card game like Mag- magic the gathering pokemon Yu Gi Oh, any of those things um yeah. it has a little bit of that vibe for that reason okay it's all about clever okay. clever card play and combos so when you're playing cards it's gonna like um work well together with other cards you've already played and trying to set up and pay off combinations and things like that. But the main, oh. um, again, without going too much into detail of the mechanics, but the main kind of hook of the game is that every single yeah. card that I play uh, actually creates an opportunity for my opponent to abuse and use that card against me. Oh. So every, yeah, so if you're not familiar oh, wow. with board games, um, there's kind of worker placement, uh, which is like you have a certain amount of workers and then you mm-hmm. would place that work in a specific spot to get a specific, um, you know, reward. Every card that you nice. play has a worker placement location that only your opponent can use. So mm-hmm. you really have to weigh the benefits of playing that card versus the opportunities you're giving your opponent. And that's the like tension of every single card you play is like, this is going to be great for me, but man, I'm giving my, my, <laughs> I'm opening a window for my opponent yeah. to like do something mm-hmm. for me. So that's kind of the crux and the, um, you know, the the tension, the tension and the the hook of the game. That's awesome. That's yeah, that really cool. Exciting. It sounds fun. So I wanted to. Um, so Ma- oh, sorry. Go ahead, Rob. Go ahead, Johnny. Yeah. All right, I just wanted to. And <laughs> I'm excited. I wanted to backtrack a little bit and um, what actually sparked the idea or like the creation of of Kyperium? Um, it started with the, the, the mechanism in the game. Um, so a lot of times it's kind of a common question in game design is like, do you start with theme or do you start with, with the mechanism? Um, yeah. you know, and when you so say mechanism, what mech- do you, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. So I was going to say like, for those of you who aren't like hobby board gamers, a mechanism or a mechanic as they call it in the industry is like, so for example, in a uh, monopoly, um, the main mechanism is roll and move. You roll and then you move what you roll. Mm. So that's that's a, mecha- a mechanism. Uh, set collection is another example of a mechanism where you're trying to, um, in a lot of card games, you're trying mm-hmm. to collect, um, you know, oh. multiples of a card. That's set collection. So there's like gotcha. obviously hundreds of different types of mechanisms or or, or um, mechanics again, mechanics. as we call it in the industry. Um, so yeah, in the you know a lot of people uh ask you know do you start with a mechanism or with a theme and for me um i start i i I thought of the mechanism of like i'm playing cards down i I don't know what the theme is yet i don't know how any of this works but i want to be able to play cards for benefits but i wanted to also have tension where my opponent can Mm. abuse and use my cards against me so that's oh. where it started. I pitched that idea to Steve, nice. and then we started just brainstorming and throwing ideas back and forth. And that's when the the worker placement, uh, which is another mechanism, a board game mechanism, um, kind of came into the picture. Uh, yeah, so it started with that, and then we just brainstormed and worked at it. And um, yeah, and then the the theming, um, I don't even remember, to be honest. I know I was at work, and I was just trying to think of a cool theme. And I'm a huge sci-fi nerd. A lot of my, <laughs> uh, a lot of my board games and board gaming is is done in the sci-fi space, space. Kind of, uh, theme. Yeah. yeah, and I'm a huge film nerd, and my favorite genre is, is sci-fi as well. So, Sweet. Um, mm-hmm. yeah, it was just natural to kind of go into the sci-fi thing. Yeah, that's awesome. That. So, Matt, how do you how do you envision Kyperium appealing to players of different ages and skill levels? And 
Does the game offer different difficulty levels or adaptations to accommodate uh, players of various skill level? Sure. Yeah, good that's question. a good question. The the so there's kind of two different uh, worlds in the board gaming. There's the mass market uh, board gaming. <laughs> yeah, there's a picture of me with me with my boys. Um, yeah, so in the board gaming world, there's mass market games, and that's the games that like um, you you folks, if you're not you know hobbyist board gamers like me, would know about. You know, probably games like Monopoly and Risk mm -hmm. and um, maybe Apples to Apples or Cards Against Humanity. Right. All of these games are mass market games. They're made so that like mm -hmm. you could grab it, sit down, read the rules in three minutes, and have a good time. Um, then there's out, like right. hobby, yeah. Then there's the hobby board game market where it's like it's 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 made for people that like live and breathe board gaming um <laughs> and so our game was designed specifically for the hobby hobby board game market um which okay. is why nice. like selling 400 games is a huge accomplishment um because in the mass market game in the mass market kind of world selling 400 yeah. games is is nothing right right um so our mm -hmm. game, you're never going to see our game at target or at walmart um or any of these like mass mass appeal locations you're gonna see oh, you say in, never in i wouldn't say never <laughs> Your it, it might happen i could see it yeah i can see it too yeah. so, so all that being said i will say like one of the like um mission statements that we had made at the very beginning was to make sure that the rule set was fairly light mm -hmm. um so the the rule book and the rule set is not huge you know, you read, yeah. through, you read through the rule book. You can learn to play in like 15, 15 20 minutes. That's good. Um, oh, cool. And perfect. But there's lots of complexity in the cards and the decision making. Um, oh. So when you look at your hand of cards and you look at the board state and what's what's happening, there's like a mm -hmm. dozen different things you can do in a dozen different ways. The the combinations and and things are endless. So somebody who wow. plays like no board games at all or just like mass market like fun games um you know at the kitchen table with family um <laughs> it probably it might not appeal to them as much um but that's just kind of the nature of, of the beast yeah but, but i like that, that you like made, I said, it, I will made say it simple that, so so an experienced yeah, player could sit games. back and go you're playing your worker all wrong you're playing <laughs> your worker all wrong <laughs> it's cool because um and and that goes for a lot of these games is like you and i can sit down and play a game and your strategy and the way that your brain works is going to play the game in a completely different way than mm. than i might exactly. and then like the next yeah. time around i'm going to play somebody else and they can take a completely different approach so it's uh it's fun to to watch uh, other people play your game and, and kind of discover combos and and different ways that people can play different a thing ways. that you made yourself yeah it's, uh, that it's very satisfying. That's so cool. Uh, yeah, I was gonna say it sounds rewarding. Very rewarding. So and I assume your kids play your game with you. Uh, my my kids aren't quite old enough to. to play. My my oldest is six. Um, and there's lots of reading. Like the cards are just full of text. Okay. Not full of text, but the cards have text. Um, and so he's not reading quite yet. Okay. Uh, maybe in the next you know couple of years, but he's definitely very very <laughs> interested in board gaming. Awesome. And we do play a lot of board games that don't you know we sp I specifically seek out games that uh, I can play with him that doesn't have text. But Rob, amazing. Yeah. Um. With the initial success that you're seeing, are you already planning expansions or other related game products? Yeah. Yeah. Good um, question. We do have a, a lot of ideas for expansions. And as I said, like one of the one of our main mission statements was to make sure that the, the rule set was super light, but that the there was lots of complexity and strategy in the in the actual play of the game. So um that being said, we had lots of ideas, right? We're throwing all kinds of things mm. at the wall. Um, and it's like, let's try this thing. Let's try that thing. And it's like, oh, we would have to write an extra rule. It's an extra thing for people to remember. So let's just put that aside for now. Let's, you know, and then again, we that would happen over and over again. So there's a good handful of, of mechanisms and ideas that were kind of shelved or put to the side, um, you know, ah. with, for the sake of keeping the game fairly simple and and you know quick to get to the table and play. Um, so that yeah. being said, we do we do have a lot of ideas and thoughts to expand the game one of them would be to make it multiplayer so that you could play at three or four players 
Um, mm-hmm. yeah. Playing solo solo board gaming is a huge thing. Um, you wouldn't think it, and I'm not a solo board gamer myself, but it's it is a very very I, popular thing. Oh, that's I have if you're interested in solo board gaming. I'd be interested. Yeah, in I it. would. I would. I yeah. I fell in love with uh, Zombicide, which is one of the oh the, yeah the falls in the jar that Matt is talking cool. about. And I mean, I've got absolutely pretty much every expansion, and I have absolutely played solo games where it's just like, okay, so now I don't have anyone else in my party screwing this up. Let's do this right. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So yeah, there's lots of ideas. We are thinking about uh, expanding and making some variability in the game so that every time you play, it's a slightly different game as well. Um, and then nice. we actually, Steve had had started an, a design prior to all of this. It was a, a card battling, again, kind of a, a, a magic style. Like I have my character, you have yours, and we're trying to whittle our, our health down in creative ways. Um, so Steve had designed or partially designed a game, um, you know, that, that was that style. And then, um, with, with Hyperium funding successfully, we thought, um, why don't we reskin that game into a Hyperium universe game? Mm. Um, so we're going to make it into Hyperium, uh, gladiators, like robot gladiators Ah. is going to be the theme. That's cool. uh, yeah, so like we we didn't really talk That's about cool. the theme, but the idea is that this like um this new really powerful element called Kyperium was discovered in the Kuiper Belt, and so humanity sent um you know um, two corporations to the Kuiper Belt to build a space station, mine the Kyperium, research it, um, and it's this incredibly powerful element. Um, but now you know hundreds of years go by in the space station. There's like a, there's like a full civilization living in the Kuiper Belt. And so nice. these people need to be entertained. And so the, you know, this other game that, that Steve and I started designing literally in the last, like, I want to say month, um, is going to oh. be the, the idea that, like, these folks are being entertained with these robot gladiator matches in space. I'm excited to wow. try it just because, I mean, it just, it sounds so interesting and, and so different. Than anything I've yeah, ever played before. Yeah, you created before. your own like multiverse, like a DC Marvel <laughs> thing. I was like, you this know, is so cool. And I like, this I like, vi- I'm a video game player more than board games, but I like games that have backstories and stories to them. Me too. You know, and and, and Me too. yeah, I, I I'm excited actually. Yeah, you know, I'm excited to try it. My last cool. question actually was kind of similar to Rob's. Were you going to either create a children's game? Um, inspired of your sons, or would you let your sons create a game? Mm. <laughs> um, I would love to create a game with with my sons. Uh, that would be super yeah. fun. And he's like, because of obviously daddy's making board games and has made this board <laughs> game, he like grabs, you know, he grabs paper and pens and dice and all sorts of stuff and like makes these super simple, silly games. Oh, um, but so it's so definitely cute. like, yeah, it's it's compl- it's so adorable. Um, in fact, is. my Father's Day drew like a board game on my my Father's Day card. Um, so oh, like, yeah, so... it's definitely a oh, thing that wow. that I think will end up being, um, you know, something that that I do with with my boys. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely, I love that. amazing, dude. Love that. Well, we're definitely yeah. out of time, so I appreciate you joining us. But can you tell everyone where they can find you? Just to let you know, you can find a link to his game in our description. But just uh, any closing words you have as well, Matt. Yeah, um, so we're super excited. Like like you said, we uh, we ordered a thousand games. We have over four hundred pre-sold. Um, so we're really looking forward to uh, the game landing in in people's uh, you know at people's homes and seeing other people enjoy a game that I've created. It's uh, it's it's pretty uh, surreal that it's actually happening um but all that being said you can go to um, kyperium.backerkit.com um so kyperium is k u i p e r i u m again kyperium.backerkit.com you can pre-order the game there and be one of the first to play the game when it when it arrives that is so exciting right. Well, thank you so thank much for you, yeah. joining us, Matt. We appreciate you joining us and telling us all about this wonderful game. And I'm looking forward to trying it out. So maybe yeah. maybe I'll come to Canada and, and try it out with you, Robbie. <laughs> well, hey, that would be awesome. <laughs> Let's do it. Yeah, well, we'll, 
We'll, we'll call Matt and we'll see if we can get that right. We can have it right. On. That'd be awesome. <laughs> that would be great. Or, or have him sit <laughs> by and just go, you're playing it all wrong. <laughs> you're doing it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you again, Matt. It was great talking to you. Appreciate you. Thanks, Matt. Thanks, yeah. Matt. Thanks so much for having me on. This was a blast. And uh, awesome. thanks for allowing me to, to promote my little project. Absolutely. We love it. Thank of you. Course. Love it. Wow. You know, we've been away for a little while. It's okay if I miss some buttons. It's all right. <laughs> Sorry, I was, I, I was just bouncing here. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was exciting. Yeah, that was, man, he, really good. I'm really excited about that game. I, when I saw the trailer, the trailer really did it for me, actually. So, right? Yeah, yeah. honestly, it. Like, it was like a movie. Having having a friend that works as a video producer who just goes out on a limb and throws something for you like this and the production <laughs> value of it is fantastic yeah it makes you want to play it immerses you in this world where you're like like you said it's like a video game trailer it's like okay well i want to start playing these cards yeah go yeah i mean yeah. super engaging All yes right. mm -hmm.